Hi there. Come on in. I'm Fred Trost. The show is the practical sportsman, and you're probably going to say, what's so practical about a motorhome outdoors? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in the next half hour. We're going to talk about using RVs in deer camp. We're going to talk about how to take care of your trailer so the wheels and bearings don't come off, and a lot more. So please, stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost. You're watching The Practical Sportsman. Well, this is a departure for, from all the other years I've been camping in tents for our bow camp and gun camp. Now we're starting to do it in style. It's just practical, very frankly. Uh, practical to have an, an RV since I've gotten into it this year. There are all kinds of RVs that people use. You don't have to have a new one by any stretch of the imagination. The bow camp that we were invited to this year has a, well, a travel trailer, a pop-up camper, a motorhome essentially here, and here's the gang. My name's okay. Tom, Tom Digert. Okay, but we won't say where you're from. No. No, we don't want people <laughs> looking this stuff up. From here. From here. <laughs> yeah. I, may be, I may be living here for a while now. <laughs> from this camp. Okay, well, you have the, the little tent trailer. Yes. Or, no, the, the travel trailer. The travel trailer. trailer. Yeah. Right. And that we're going to go into that baby in a minute. And you, Tom. Tom DeMuro. Tom DeMuro, okay. Right. Give out the last name. Last name. No okay. Okay. Uh, and you have a, how long have you had this tent camper? Uh, three years. You use it with the family in yep. the summer? Yep. yep. When it's not broke. Yeah. <laughs> when it's not broke. <laughs> Let's see, Larry, you have the, the motorhome. Motor right. Now, this is not the latest vintage motorhome. No, this is a 1977 motorhome. Okay. 21 years old. 21 years old. Did you buy it new? No, no. I bought it used about three years ago. Now, what do you pay for something like that? I paid about 4500 for it. Oh, Okay. So let's, let's, you know, one thing you got to ask when you see this, I have never, ever in my life seen somebody level their camper by driving up on two by fours and then a little teeny two by four under the tire. I'm a professional. <laughs> you have it under both tires. How'd you do it? It, it wasn't easy. <laughs> no, I just put it there and drove up on it. And when I got up on it, I could feel it and stopped. But what about the other tire? How'd you get the, the span? I just laid them both the same and then just put them up there a lot of trial and error twice oh, okay but you have it leveled i have it leveled. that i i really don't know why did you put the little one right under the tire instead <laughs> i uh it was the last okay. board i found <laughs> last board you found okay because it's larry <laughs> because it's larry let's just check in here well we won't have to check we'll get some shots in here describe the inside uh it's just a bed in the back bed in the, on the, this side of the motor home and then I've got a kitchen down that side, closet, and my uh, uh, bathroom in there. Mm -hmm. Bathroom is quite small. But do you use everything in there? Everything in there is used until it gets too cold for the water pump to be operated. Okay. Well, very good. And this, of course, these guys all use pallets here in front of the doors, which is really nice. A neat thing to do to, you know, scuff your feet off and... Scuff your feet off, get it cleaned up, and then we put the extra step there because my wife comes out quite often, and mm -hmm. she's a short one, so we got an extra step for her. Okay, well, very good. Now, over here, Demuro, you have a, uh, well, Jayco, that's a popular brand. Yep. They're a big company down yep. in Indiana. Yep. Do you always cook outside here? Always cook outside, yep. Keeps the smells out of the camper. It's just easier that way. Well, it's only smells of food, for crying out loud. It could well, be a lot worse. Could be a lot worse, you're right. <laughs> Let's yep. check inside here. Matt, you can come on in here, I think. I'll come yeah, these are uh, surprisingly large yep, inside. I don't know how what the distance is from one end to the other. Who sleeps here? Ryan sleeps there. Ryan, okay, Ryan, he's the guest. And, of course, you have a little sink here. Sink. Do you use this at all with the water? Yes, yes, we do. But I didn't bring any water right now because I didn't mm -hmm. know how the weather's going to be like. So you're just using it mainly for sleeping? Yes. Now, is, is, it, is it warm enough in here with the canvas? We have the heater, so it really is pretty warm. Okay. Yeah, it stays pretty warm. Uh, what do you pay for something like this? Five grand. Five grand. Buy it new or used? New. New? New. Very good. Well, okay, now we're going to go over into, uh, well, we're, we're into the the bargain of all <laughs> bargains. I mean, this is your travel trailer. What kind is this, anyway? It is, uh... Oh, he has to look... <laughs> Skylark. <laughs> the Skylark. Do they make them anymore? I, I think they do, yeah. Okay. Avenue, yeah. Now this is, look at this. This is this is quaint. As you go inside here, there's a sign that greets you at the door. It says right off the bat, God bless our camper. Yep. Isn't that nice? Yep. This is, this is you have a, a little dinette here on the back end. Mm -hmm. That breaks down to a bed. Mm -hmm. And then this is a couch over here, but I never put it up. 
this right there bed, for a couch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you just use this as a bed and this for storage. It looks storage like. Storage up there, yeah. I and then it. you have bathroom in here. Mm -hmm. Why well, look at that? No shower. No shower. No shower. Just but this is an old Skylark. Yeah, this is an older camper, and it, <laughs> I bought it. It was kind of beat up on the inside, and did some repair on it, but the price was right. Repair? This here? This yeah. end? I rebuilt. I rebuilt it from here back. I shaved two by fours and shaped them, and I put insulation in it. Well, what was the problem? They had a leak and they didn't fix it. Water damage? Yeah, it was been so, setting for a couple, three years. And so, what kind of cash did you have to lay out for a trailer like this? Seven hundred. Seven hundred dollars? Yeah. Holy cow! And everything works. You got the stove. Mm -hmm. Of course, we cooked on this last night. Had the spaghetti in here. Well, the, that's great. The oven works. The fridge works. And the furnace works. Furnace works. Well, you're all set. Very good. So do you use this for anything other than just deer camp? I just got about the 1st of September, repaired it at home, and brought it out here right away. Huh. <laughs> Very good. Well, let's go out here and, and talk with the gang about their experiences. How long have you guys been into using, you know, RVs here as opposed to tents and things? Well, let's see. Last two years, we've had my camper out and Larry's motorhome. Okay. Yeah. And you picked up the trailer. Yep, yeah, this year. And now Tony and Troy. This is our first year here. Yeah. But you're already negotiating right now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We have one, but it's up north, and we're going to buy another one and put it here. Another one. What, what do you have up north? Uh, fifth wheel. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's used for fishing? Right, yeah. And the one that you're looking at buying, I understand, is a 24-foot travel trailer. Right. Mm -hmm. For the grand price of? Around 1200 Yeah. What it's a strictly deal. Strictly a hunting one. <laughs> a hunting one, yeah, but you guys use this a lot. Who who was tented in the past? Oh, I've all, tented, all of you? Yeah, yeah, we've all tented. We've all tented, I think. And what's the matter with it? Nothing except it gets awful cold in the middle of a <laughs> bow season. Nothing except, <laughs> except wet clothes. Like Tired of wet clothes. clothes. <laughs> <laughs> no place to go stand if it's raining. Yeah. You gotta, you're stuck in the, in the tent. How about you, Troy? Yeah, just cold weather. Yeah, definitely. Well, don't like that. What about you, yeah. Dad? See? Wind. Wind? Oh, we have the <laughs> wind. Well, we right had this now. fly going now. Yeah. Ryan, you being the youngest in camp, <laughs> what do you give a rip? You're a tenting boy, aren't you? Yes, I am, except for the hard ground. Oh, the hard ground. The hard ground. That's right, because you were a Boy Scout. Yes, exactly. For many years. You weren't supposed to tell everybody that. Well, hey, <laughs> almost an Eagle Scout. So this this really, you know, some people say, this isn't camping. This isn't deer camp. You have the comforts. No, this is deer camp. This is our deer <laughs> camp. This and is perfect. You're up here for 10 days. 10 days. Yep. Rat. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> now, you guys were looking at, at our uh, pickup camper there, and you had different concerns about it, and I can't remember who had what. Uh, about uh, what's, what's wrong with it? Once you put it in place, it's, you have to move your, the truck with the camper. Wherever you go, the camper follows you. Okay, then let me say to that, okay. once we put it in place and want to move, we jump inside and move. Drive it, yeah. You have to hitch all yours up and pack That's, it up and put it away. That's true, but we leave them here for the entire season and drive the cars back home. Well, <laughs> well, you see, we get to take ours with us wherever we go. That's true. Yeah. And can well, stop any place like, you want, right? Yeah, just yeah, like the motorhome. Motor so it's yeah, just like the motorhome. You, if you want to, if you want to get in it and go, you get in it and go. So I mean, that, that's why tent camper works the same way. I mean, or your your pickup camper. Yeah, would but work you the leave same. this motorhome out here. I leave it out here when I'm here, but I I've hunted all over all over with it. I've taken it mm -hmm. from here. I mean, it's got a 350 V8. That's what it's designed for mm -hmm. is to go down the road. Yeah. Okay. So we're moving around. You see, I mean, we're not. We're not saying there's anything oh, wrong. Oh no, with I the understand. Trailer. No, you know, but you I do have to be a little defensive about of it. Of course I do. It's my trailer. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys with a fifth wheel. You have you ever had a motorhome? Yes, I've had a motorhome, and I've also had a pickup camper like yours. Oh, okay. Well, come out here in the light here. Tell us. So, and so you and a pop-up camper. Right. Yeah, we've been okay, pop up. Okay, pop-up. Tell us. <laughs> tell, <laughs> not that old. <laughs> well, evaluate it. Give me the pros. I and don't cons. know. I, I like them all really. The pop-up's nice because it's more room. Uh, the only problem with that is taking it down in the rain right. mm -hmm. uh, and the time putting it up and taking it down. We liked our pickup camper when we had horses and did a lot of trail riding because we just hooked onto it and we could haul our trailer with it. Okay. Uh, and, of course, if you have a trailer, you can't right. haul, you can't haul a boat or anything. I guess you can with a fifth wheel, but ours is 30 feet long, so it's a little bit hard mm -hmm. to haul a boat trailer with that. But they're all nice. Well, you know, we've been camping for years. So now Ryan here, he's just been married for two years. <laughs> That's true. So you don't have a an RV? No. You don't yet. have probably much of a tent? No, not much of a tent either. How many guns you got? I'd say probably about eight. Oh! 
Ooh, you got a good start. Yes. Okay, you got some good stuff. I got all those before I got married. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see how many you add in the next few years. <laughs> probably none. Probably, probably. Well, I got a very understanding wife, so. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered how you were going to handle yeah, this. So, yeah. oh, very good. Very good. So what is it about deer camp here? Oh, it's just nice. Come up, you get away. Hold it. Did you want to say that? Yeah. Away from who? Get away <laughs> from... No, I didn't say who. I said... <laughs> just get work. away from work, everything. So you don't like You're work? out here. I enjoy my job. And, <laughs> but, and you like marriage. But, yeah, I love marriage. Love my wife, but it's nice to get away, clear your head. <laughs> this is the, one of the hardest things in the world to explain, isn't it? Yep. Yes, it is. I mean, that's, now, now he's, a, he's a rookie at it. Come out here. Okay. <laughs> we, we got a, a, a pro here. Right. How okay. do you explain it? Oh, it's fun, the camaraderie and, you know, getting together with the friends and, and family. That's my son, and we've been hunting for years, and it's just a lot of fun. And it's nothing. It's part of life. Nothing really against is. the job. Not a thing. Or not, the family no, and the home absolutely and not. It's just good friends and a good time. And it's nice to get away. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Darn hard to explain. Yeah, huh? <laughs> it is. It's just... Well, you don't get that many chances to get everybody together at one time and spend three or four or five days together. You'll see them here. You'll do something here and there. You're friends. So you're like a family for a week. I mean, we cook. We eat well. Everybody chips in. It's, it's a camaraderie. It's eat just... well. Eat well. Eat well. Yes. I, I found that there's no reason not to have a meal just because you're not hungry. I mean, <laughs> being full is irrelevant to this whole process. <laughs> being <laughs> stuffed makes no difference. No difference. No. No. And I've never had chicken soup and salad for breakfast before. <laughs> <laughs> but it's darn good. It was darn good. You bet. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, there's a lot of eating, a lot of food, yeah. and a lot of, uh, lot of fun. Now, you're talking about that you might have to live out here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Since the camper's been here, I've been out here quite a bit trying to get it fixed and ready, and, and now it's hunting season, and I don't think I've seen my wife a whole lot the last <laughs> four or five weeks. I love you, Carol. <laughs> Meal time. Now, this isn't exactly like Mountain Jacks, at least as far as the atmosphere goes, but there is something like Mountain Jacks about it. <laughs> huh? Is that right, Tom? It's something like Mountain Jacks, yes, Fred. Salad in the bag. Salad in the what bag. What a way to do it, a shortcut. What kind of soup we got here, Tony? Chicken rice. Chicken rice soup. We got homemade bread. We have an adjustable tarp. <laughs> Self-adjusting by the wind. This is my camper sale. Well, you look like you have a lot of hair, Tom. Is that just part of the hat? That's part of the hat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, crying out loud. Is it, yeah, is there's it a spot there. right there. <laughs> oh, oh, there shit. is nothing there. Wow. That's what the rebate's for. Give me a for. break. Yeah, you want to see thin. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <there. laughs> I know, but the barber didn't have to say that. I have not had the first face. Hold it just a second. Let me check here. Yeah, check Tony's. There we go. I still get the bald award for this camp. Is that, is that the way uh, your mom made it back in I Poland? Think so. Poland. <laughs> Poland. <laughs> <laughs> sure is. Poland. Try that dagger. So you, you put oil in with the water? Yeah, you put a little, yeah, a little oil, bit oil in with the water. Yep. Keeps them from sticking. Keeps yeah. them sticking. I always heard See? That you, you drain it and then put thing. oil in it. But no. You do no, it with the water. Right, right when you first boil it. Huh. Keeps it from sticking. Yeah, now, what are your sticking. credentials? Italian. Oh, I didn't know that. The Miro. Miro, okay. Mama, like Mama used to make. Condell. Condell? Yeah. Italian. It probably was Condell when my grandfather's come over, probably. I'm Irish. Wow. Well, we, we can tell that. <laughs> All the signs are there. Uh, well, he's tipping it up I'm right now. <laughs> ah, deer camp, I tell you what, that looks real good right now. The cool, crisp weather, because it has been hotter than heck here in August. But an RV, the thing about an RV is uh, it has the air conditioning in it if you want. It has stove. It has your bathroom with you at all times. And what I'm using now when I go outdoors is a motorhome. Yeah, I graduated to the bigger thing. But let me tell you, this is actually less expensive than the pickup truck and the camper that I had because those two were new. The payments on a new truck and a new camper, in fact, new RVs in general, 
you know, can be kind of steep. My wife and I got this baby. I, I, I guess I should say guess the price. You can get a used motorhome, one that's 10, 15 years old, for somewhere around ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. I mean, it can be a real bargain if you use it quite a bit. But if you decide to go the trailering route, uh, probably the most important thing you can do, and I know this is going to be a little boring, but the most important thing you can do is keep the wheel bearings greased. I know people have told you that. A lot of trailer owners don't do it, and that's why they're broken down by the side of the road with their trailer propped up. Well, here's a lesson on how to keep your bearings if you're a trailer owner. People have gotten pretty savvy about taking care of their cars and trucks. You know, changing the oil regularly, doing the regular maintenance. But sometimes we forget about those little trailers we drag behind our vehicles, whether it's campers or utility trailers or, or boat trailers. These trailers are pretty darn important to us. They carry our toys. Well, we're pretty rough on these trailers, whether we know it or not. We put some of them underwater, but too often we forget about the care and maintenance of the wheels. And bad things can happen at very inopportune times if we don't keep these wheels well greased and happy. Ernie from Mill Creek taught me how to treat them right. Getting new bearings and packing them, Ernie, is, is difficult or easy or what? No, it's, uh, it's easy to do. You do just like he's doing there, put, put the grease in your hand, and of course you got a clean new bearing, and you keep the edge of that bearing going into that grease until it comes out the top, the top like it is right there. Huh. Then the bearing is packed. Then, well, you, no then you take the bearing and just, just maybe a little bit extra of that grease, when you go to put it in the wheel, you just run it around the outside like so. Now on a trailer, whether it's a camper trailer or, or a boat trailer, how boat often trailer? would you do this? Depending on how big the wheels are or small. If you got a 12 inch wheel, that wheel's going at 60 miles an hour, that wheel's going three times faster than your car wheel. A 14 inch wheel, is going not as fast. A 15 inch wheel is going the same speed that you are. So therefore the bearing is not taking the beating that those... So the smaller wheels. That's why I'm sure many of you people have seen small camper trailers alongside the road with jacked up mm -hmm. with the axle off and that's because nobody packs the bearings and they burn they're, they're going so fast. Well, yeah, they're you know the difference between a house plant and a wheel of a boat trailer? Well, you don't need to water the trailer wheel. But the similarity between a house plant and a trailer wheel is that we water them both. And it's important to keep a boat trailer wheel well greased. And one big help is a bearing buddy. I noticed this wheel has lost its bearing buddy. <coughs> so Now, bearing buddy, <coughs> what you're saying is that this, this oftentimes, don't these just have a cap over them? Yes, they do. And lots of times people forget to, to take them caps off and take the wheel apart and grease them. So the manufacturers uh, have come out with this little outfit like this, what they call a bearing buddy. Mm -hmm. This replaces the dust cap and also gives you a grease fitting that you can grease those wheels anytime you want to. So how do you do this? So this bearing buddy fits right over the top of this right here. Mm -hmm. Then you... Take the hammer, if I can do it. What about the, uh, there we go. Here's a, here's a little you get uh, it started. handy tip. Whack it right in there. Now she's in. That's in, that's, that's solid, that's gonna stay. That's solid. Then you take this, your grease gun. Oh, I see, that's a, a zerk fitting in there. That's right. And you're filling up the bearing buddy with grease. And it's also filling the wheel, forcing out any water or anything that's in there. Well, does this replace packing the bearings? That's right. Replaces, oh, it does? Replaces taking the wheel off and forcing out all the... Okay, I see. So okay, that, that now see thing. this little breather hole? Yeah. See where grease is just now mm -hmm. start. That means that it's full. Give it one more, just a little teeny pump, and then it, and the grease should come out of there, right? See it? Okay, there we go. That means that the wheel, the wheel is full. 
So what you do is you periodically just pump this up with the grease yeah, to fill when, it up. When you look in there, there's a spring in there uh -huh. that forces, always puts pressure on that. Uh -huh. When that spring is way in there, you just take four or five pumps of grease and fill it up. So that replaces packing the bearings, which is, well, that's a heck of a saving. Yes. Oh, and there's a cap that goes over that. And you put a dust cap over the top. You push in on the center of it, and that'll put suction on it mm -hmm. so the cap don't fly off. I see. Huh. So you can't let it pull it. Yeah. Hmm. So, of course, you have to take that cap off to, to check it. Yeah, no, you can you can force that cap off. Mm -hmm. If you get just a just a little bit of grease and put in here. That'll create like more this, suction. And... Create more suction. There we go. Great. Well, that's your practical tip for this week from Ernie at Mill Creek Sports in Dexter. He fixes these things, so if you don't grease your wheels, he'll make a few bucks repairing the damage. But that's not practical. Come on, sportsmen, grease those bearings. They deserve it. So what's the point of maintaining your trailer and packing the bearings? That may not be very glamorous, but let me tell you, if you can roll outdoors, launch your boat, and get back home without having to jack it up and call emergency road service, you're a lot better off. And the point is, of getting a used motor home or a used RV or buying a new one, whatever, is to have more fun outdoors. And really, we've got to get serious about having more fun when we're hunting and fishing. Well, that's another show for this week. I'll see you again next week. I'm going uh, in the RV this weekend. I hope you have a good one too. See you next week. Here's the neat thing, Matt. Well, it's high enough to stand up in, but it's not a, apparently not a bolt blind, just a rifle blind. But these windows just tip up on hinges like that. We used to put it up on Higgins Lake for ice fish, for smell, and then we turned it into a deer blind. Nailed the door shut and put in plexiglass. And there's a string here on the inside that apparently clips to a, hangs over a nail, so you could shoot through there. But if you didn't want the wind bothering you, put it down there and it has to tie down at the bottom too, I imagine. Which is a little different than the sliding windows that might make a little bit of noise. Uh, sort of like an ice shanty. In fact, I'm not so sure this isn't an ice shanty, or wasn't an ice shanty. Yeah, because normally not, not a lot of people put a, a lock on their door of their deer blind. Right. Especially absolutely. when there's nothing in it of <laughs> right. value at all. Right. Yeah, and there's windows that are open in the whole thing. Right. Yeah, you can crawl right in. <laughs> kind of a tip off that that yeah. used to be a nice yeah, shanty. It sure was. <laughs> Has a lock on the door. And this is on skids. See right here? These skids, it looks like it has some conduit on the bottom. So at least you could drag it around and put it in a different location. Do you think with the skids on the bottom that you'll move it around? We can very easily. It'll go right onto a snowmobile trailer. Hmm. And uh, we slide it right on, slide it right off. Well, it's a big one. Yeah, it is. Four people. <laughs> it's a neat idea. Neat idea. I like those, like those windows. Tom, you know, I was just talking to Tony about his ice fishing shanty that he turned into a deer blind. Right. Now, I understand you turned your deer blind into an outhouse. <laughs> <laughs> so this was at one time the deer blind, huh? Yeah. When uh, it was getting kind of rotted, and so and we're, you can hunt from elevated stands this year. So I was going to hunt elevated, and I thought, well, you know what? We need an outhouse out here. But I had to make it a little taller. So uh -huh. I added. That's what this is. I added some height to it, so people can walk into it easier. I had a short door on it. You get a duck into mm -hmm. it. Oh this, yeah. This is my son's paint job on it. It's deluxe. <laughs> Yeah, it works out good. I tell you, you know, these, these blinds and all, you can just switch and match and change. You could sit on a pot and hunt if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah, you could. <laughs> you could.